Okay, um, so today I'll be going through um, this scene again. So since we already have the, the lighting set up, so I thought uh, we'll just go through how, how we'll properly set up all the render, render layers and then set it to render. And hopefully maybe the next session that we, we come back to this, I will just put all the renders together um, in COP and then just uh, with some minor tweaks and export out as a MOV or something. Yeah, so today's session, we'll be talking about um, setting up render layers. So basically what that means is um, if if we will want to um, have this in, in production, we, we probably want to split the, the characters with the background separately. So the compositor has a, a bit more room to, to do what they want to do with the background, the foregrounds, and a bit more controls. And also it helps you lighten your, your renders. Uh, for example, if you're rendering your foreground um foreground pass um you can turn turn off the displacement or or your um subdivision in in your background so that helps you lighten up your your render time and and stuff okay so first off um how do we create um render layers is by clicking on this icon here it will open up this panel basically okay and okay so once you open up this panel i'll just briefly go through the the scene portion so this basically means that um any settings tweak to here will apply to the whole scene right so you got your render settings basically means or or your okay let me just change this to Arnold. <clears throat> okay so you got all your samples control um your motion blur your depth of field um and then all your aov stuff okay so these are your render settings and you got AOVs as well, which we will set up as well to, to make sure you output the correct thing. And then here you got your likes. So this is where it shows you all your likes um, in your scene and you can um, change them accordingly if you want. Um, and then we can tweak the exposure if you want. Um, but okay, let me just set it back. Okay, um, but today we are not using that because we already set up our, our lighting um, like how we want already so we'll not be doing that okay so uh, let me just arrange my um, workspace okay cool so how we want to split this scene i mean for me maybe i'll just do a two pass uh, background and the foreground the background being everything behind the character and the foreground being the table together with the character okay so um we'll start off by clicking this um icon it creates a render layer so let's just do the background first uh, we'll call it the set kitchen okay um okay then we, we we can view from here okay so basically inside this layer right now there's nothing that's why you are getting an empty scene here so how we can add um geometries into this layer um, is by creating collections so right click on this layer you create collections okay so this will be my main um kitchen oh not main actually it's my background kitchen um geometry okay this very correctly okay can okay so um if i look into my scene um under the set i have already grouped them um background foreground background foreground so this is the background layer so we'll just put in all the the BG stuff. Okay, so how to add collections, <clears throat> how to add the geometries to the collections. Um, there is different ways. You can select them in your outliner, uh, middle, middle mouse click and drag into this area like that. Or um, you can, let me just remove them. Or you can select them in your outliner and click on add. Also, you can bring them in here. Um, and there's another way by using expression. So um, this say I can, Okay, maybe I'll just use a, a simpler scene so we can um, go through easier. So I have this set up um, beforehand. Uh, so it's just some spheres and some cubes and they are in different groups. So basically group A is all the spheres. I mean spheres A group is all the spheres. Then I got cube A and cube B, which is the smaller cubes and the bigger cubes. Okay, so say I want to create a render layer for the spheres, right? I'll add a collection. Okay, this will be my spheres joke, right? So what I can do in this um, using expression is I can say, so we'll use pipe, geo, pipe again, and then sphere, and I can just put um, star, 
type and then start. So what this does is it will, if I click view all, it will shows me what my expression is um, pulling in. So these are all the geometries that will be selected. So what is good about this is say at some point, um, I update, uh, I create more spheres, right? And then all this, I create more spheres, for example. And then if I go to view all, all those spheres will be automatically added into your collection. So it's good to help you catch all these um, things that if you if you are to do it manually previously, like uh, if you just click this and drag in here, um, it will you will miss out the tool that you um, later on add on. So um, there's good um, things about expression if you know how to use them. So okay, I will repeat again. So how to get the <clears throat> this how to get the collection reads all everything that's within this um, sphere group is um, we'll use pipe. Okay, so. And we'll choose, okay, so by default it's um, geo, right? So we'll go to geo, okay, pipe again. So because that's the next hierarchy, then sphere. Okay, I didn't type sphere A underscore group. Um, instead, I just use the X3. So that basically means sphere and anything um, that has a sphere in the front will, will be collected into this collection. Okay, then pipe again, and then star. So star basically means um, everything. So everything within this this group will be selected um, in this expression. Okay, if you again make sure everything is inside. Okay, okay. So let's say now I want to do the cube A. Okay, cube A selection um, will be okay, that's me cube A geometry. Okay, so say I want to put the cube A's inside here. So if I we were to do the same thing, pipe geo. And then pipe again, um, so cube. And if we put star, pipe star, what this does is it will put in our A and B cubes together. So now you see that this S3 will not work if we want to do it this way, right? So we need to type cube A instead. So this, this way, if I press enter, I view, it will just pull in the cubes A um, geometry. Then same thing if you want to create the cube. B. Then we'll just um, use expression um, pipe geo cube B um, star pipe star. Okay. And then let's just double check. Guess it. Guess it. Okay. So in in cases that okay, you know, I I I do not know this syntax. So how do I get it? Um, very easy. So you go to um your collection. And then you say this is cube B. So you go to your cube B um, group. Okay, you middle mouse click this and you drag to the expression area. It will give you that syntax. Um, and then what you need to do is just add in the pipe and then asterisk. So this will put in all the geometries inside. So it's exactly the same thing. It said I was lazy to type the underscore group. I just changed it to asterisk. So it, it just gives you the same thing as well. Okay. So that's a bit on the expression thing. Uh, if you can use it, if your if your scene is set up properly, um, everyone is following the the hierarchy, um, the naming convention. Like all the artists that's working on the shot, is is doing the naming correctly. So you can use this to your favor. Like, um, if all your artist is naming the background uh, with a BG underscore set or something, then you can pull in everything, um, easily. Okay, so right now I don't think it's set up that way. Um, I will just put in manually. So this is supposed to be the background kitchen. I will just put the background kitchen. Okay, into the scene. Okay, okay. So now it has the background kitchen. Oh, let's just um do a test render. Okay, it has nothing. Okay, just just double check. Okay, so by default in options, um uh, include all likes in each render layer by default is turned on. Um, just now I was troubleshooting something, so I turn it off. So if you turn it on, okay, do a test render again. Okay, maybe I need to refresh my scene. Still nothing. Okay, let me just close this and reopen uh, my uh, no render view. So it just needs a, a restart. Okay, so now this is my background. Um, so you'll be thinking this this is it? Mm, no, 
because um, we have our characters in the foreground that is moving a, a bit so that might or might not cast some shadows onto a background so um, for safety wise of course we can do some tests um, before and after with the the characters and all to test whether it's it contributing to a background but um, from for this case right now I, I will just edit in um, to show you guys how to set it up if we really need uh, uh, the geometry is there to be casting shadows okay so we'll create a collection so this will be our influencing geometry okay so this will be all the foreground stuff our character the knife and its carrot okay let me just add them in okay so now if we render we get everything again uh, I think I need to force refresh the uh, render update full scene okay so now it will just give me everything okay so how can I make use of the render layer to say I want to render this but the foreground um, geometries I just want it to be casting shadows so basically turning off the visibility right so what I can do is I will just select any geometry Okay, go to the attribute editor. Okay, go to its shape layer and inside Arno. Okay, make sure you are selecting the influencing geometry. Okay, right click on the visi primary visibility. Create absolute override. Okay, you'll see that um, under this collection, it creates this override um, within all the, all the shape layers. So this is all the influencing geometries and then star basically includes all your shape layer and apply this visibility to all the shape layers. So I want to turn it off. Okay, so now if I were to um, render again, hold on, let me, okay. I should see um, the character gone, but it's there as the influencing um, casting shadow or occluding or bouncing off any um, lights if it needs into the background. Okay, so this, set kitchen pass is done so next what we need to do is we'll create our of our character pass which will include the foreground right so um same thing we'll create a collection so this will be our fg um, char geometry okay so this will include the knife the character the, the foreground set um the carrot maybe I mean, not maybe, the carrot, yes. Okay, so let's view from here. <clears throat> okay, you can see that now we are we are getting just our character. But a uh, weird thing is we are getting this white alpha now. Okay, so what could it be coming from? Um, so let's go to our light group and just double check our EMV light. Make sure it's visibility to camera, it's off. Okay, just test render again. <clears throat> Okay, so now we get it uh, working, but you can see that now it's so bright compared to what it's supposed to look like. And why is it so? Um, obviously, because the whole set is not there anymore, and now all the light are blasting into the scene. So um, what we can do is create another collection. So this will be our influencing geometry. <clears> okay, <throat> then inside this collection, we will put in our uh, background back in okay so now again uh, before I just move on to test render we want to turn off the visibility for this uh, influencing geometry so same thing go to the geometry um, I mean go to the shape layer right click on primary visibility create absolute override for visible layer okay once you see it turn orange that means you are controlling it inside the render layer okay so just turn it off okay you see turn off Okay, let's test render again. Okay, let's let me ref update my scene. Okay, now we can see it looks like what it's supposed to look like um, in the scene, just that without the background. So now if we were to overlay this on top of our background layer, it should it should work. Okay, so that is um, the basis, uh, the basics of um, render layers and how how you can use them to help you. Um, set up your scene okay so just now i mentioned that no uh, we can probably turn off the the this i mean the the subdivision of our background layers to to make it faster um, to render this pass so what we can do okay same thing under the influencing geometry um just select the, the layer the collection i mean 
scroll down your inside Arnold tab, scroll down subdivision. I can oh the subdivision is already none. Okay, so in cases where you know it's set to um cat duck or linear or so basically there's subdivision. Um what you can do is you can right click here, create absolute override for visible layer. So this will be the subdivision and you can just turn it off here in cases where it's it's turned on. Okay, so right now by default my my scene is set it up. My scene is set up as a none, so we just leave it. Okay. Also, what you can do is um you can set up a, a render settings um quality for your character pass. Um, what I mean by that is I can go to my render settings. Okay. So say now um, it's just the first pass that we want to render, right? So I will um right click this, create um uh, absolute override. Okay. Same thing we want to create this as well. Create the specular transmission. Um SSS and this one. Okay, so now we have this render settings and we have this this chunk of values that we can change. And say you no, know, it's just the, the first pass. Um my A samples can be two, um the diffuse and specular can be one, transmission maybe two can or maybe just put it back to one. Uh no, I think leave it at two. Yeah. So just some optimization compared to your so now if I were to disable this, the values is 3, 2, 2, 2. And then now if I enable this, you see that the values change. So, and what I can do now is I can select all the overrides. Um, okay, before that, I'll just create uh, uh, another collection. Okay, I'll just name this the, the low settings. Okay, select all the low settings, middle mouse click into the low settings. So now I have a set of low settings. And then say no, I have um set up um uh, uh, a high settings and I already know what values I want to put in. So I can same thing I will create um absolute override again on this. Okay. And then we'll create another collection call this the, the high settings. Then we'll put this inside the high settings. Okay, so if you have two collections like that, um, it will take the, the later one. So um, say you want to render low settings, but so what you need to do is you need to click on this to disable it. Okay, if it's enabled, it will override the, the top ones. So say in this one, our A samples is maybe four, uh, diffuse samples is three, three, um, you can leave the, two, the rest at two. Yeah, so so basically you can set up um different render settings for different output and then all this can be reused in, in your um you know other passes or if, if you are working in a team you can pass all these settings to, to your, your fellow artists by exporting um the the render settings and then your your colleague will just import in the your settings. Okay. So that is that helps to streamline everyone is using the same um samples and then we are judging the image um based on the same quality instead of you no know, someone render in a very high quality and then someone render in a very low res and then when when people are judging the shot the, there's a very drastic difference. So that's how you guys can streamline um your workflow. Okay, so that's how um what so there are some of the things that you can you can do to your um Render layers and some of the useful stuff basically. Okay, so now I will just remove this since I, I don't need it. Okay, and if you see a, a red color outline around your this icon, basically it means that it needs a refresh, a reload to your layer. So you click on this, you will just update everything again. Okay, so that is how you create render layers. Uh, okay, so if you find that this this video is helping you and it, it gives you some information, um, which help you in your workflow or something, um, do like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section to ask me. And thank you. See you next time.